So if you are working as a frontline healthcare provider in the emergency department, it's important to keep your ACLS rhythm recognition skills up to date. Make sure you are familiar with different types of abnormal rhythms, know the underlying causes and know the appropriate treatment to use in court situation. By doing so, you can help save lives and improve patient outcome. The rhythm recognition provided by ACLS guidelines include either shockable rhythms or non-shockable rhythms. Now, to shock or not to shock, that is the question for your AED. In fact, that's what AED does. It determines the patient condition and determines whether the rhythm produced by heart is shockable or not shockable in certain condition. First of all, we'll learn about the shockable rhythms, which are ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. Then we'll look forward to other rhythms, which are considered non-shockables, which include asystole, pulseless electrical activity, atrial fibrillation, atrial tachycardia, etc. Next, we'll talk about shockable rhythms, which include ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. First of all, ventricular tachycardia or VTEC is an abnormal cardiac rhythm characterized by usually quick heartbeats. A heart in ventricular tachycardia normally beats more than 100 times per minute or even more than 150. VTEC is generated by abnormal electrical impulse in the lower chamber of the heart or ventricle. Ventricular tachycardia can sometimes cause blood to cease flowing through the body. VTEC is recognized by abnormally white and bizarre QRS complex morphology. Normally, P waves are present but are hiding inside the QRS complexes, so they are not visible on an ECG monitor. QRS duration is longer than 120 milliseconds, it means the QRS is widened in this case. It's usually originate in the ventricle at a rate of 100 beats per minute. This can be hemodynamically unstable, resulting in severe hypotension and thus be light threatening. When an AED detects VT on a monitor, the shock is advised. Now, let's understand ventricular fibrillation or VFib. It's another shockable rhythm. VFib is an abnormal cardiac rhythm in which the lower chamber of the heart or ventricle twitch but do not produce an effective heartbeat. Ventricular fibrillation is major cause of sudden cardiac death, often occurring during or immediately after a heart attack. Like VT, AED also advises shock in the case of VFib, and VFib is characterized by fibrillatory waves, like here in the image below. VFib is a chaotic rhythm, and the ventricular rate is often more than 150 to 300, sometimes even 500. Here, the QRS morphology of VFib varies in shape, amplitude, and duration, which is a prominent irregular rhythm. Both VTEC and VFib prevent the heart from delivering blood to the body's vital organs, which is why immediate CPR is necessary. CPR is essential for both arrhythmias in order to manually keep blood circulating throughout the body in the absence of a regular heart. Now, let's have a look at the rhythm which are not shockable. First, asystole. An asystole indicate that the electrical system of the heart has shut down and there is no beating. Asystole can be caused by untreated ventricular tachycardia or VFib. Whenever someone goes into asystole, CPR should be started right away to give them the best chance of survival. If an asystole rhythm is detected by an AED, it will not deliver a shock to the patient because the defibrillation is not a viable treatment option here. Next, pulseless electrical activity or PEA. It another type of irregular heartbeat caused by an electrical problem in the heart. In PEA, the heart's electrical activity is too weak to continue pumping blood throughout the body. Like with asystole, an AED will not correct this arrhythmia and the CPR should be administered as soon as possible to provide the best patient outcome. And please do not forget to subscribe and support us if you find this video helpful. Thank you.